Hi, I'm Andy Glass of Glass Impressions. In the past few months since we've had our 5 foot by 8 foot ShopBot CNC machine, we've had a lot of questions and direct messages on a few of the features like the auto tool changer, the vacuum table, and the spindle itself. Uh, so we wanted to do a three, four part series uh, on the machine and just give a little bit of information, answer any questions you guys have after we post the video, and just be a little bit more transparent in what we have here and why we bought it and hopefully educate you guys on any of your purchases and uh, get that information out to you. So today we're gonna start out with the Auto Tool Changer or ATC. Now it's a very expensive add-on to your machine depending on what you have. It can add uh, 20 to 50% of your CNC cost. Uh, but in my opinion, if you're using this machine for production and a money-making venture, the, the Auto Tool Changer is an absolute must uh, if you're using multiple tools on a, on a project. Basically, it allows the spindle to automatically come over to each individual tool holder, which has an individual bit in there for different operations that you're doing, and it will come over, it will grab a new tool, and go ahead and complete that operation. It'll come back, it'll put it away, it'll uh, scan over and grab whatever tool is next in your operation, and it basically allows the CNC operator to program that machine with confidence and go ahead and start assembling cabinets or closet systems or package material or whatever other tasks they have in the workshop they can do while being in earshot of the machine, uh, they can be uh, twice as productive and the efficiency is just absolutely insane. So again, it's expensive, but it's a must if you're gonna be in that production realm of things uh, and utilizing your CNC machine. This is a five foot by eight foot machine. It can hold 12 different tools. Now I only have nine on here. I need to add three more of the clips um, there on the end that are just out of frame. Um, but I will get to that in a little bit. Basically what I'm doing now is I'm taking the tool holders. I have different bits. This is a three millimeter drill that I use for cabinet productions or the drill uh, charging station that we're bringing to market. Basically this uh, pre-drills any holes that we're gonna use for screws. And what I do is basically uh, six, seven, and eight are kind of my varying tools right now. So these three get changed out if I'm doing uh, cabinets or if I'm doing the router bit or CNC uh, trays that I have here. So right now I have a quarter inch, three eighths and half inch diameter drill and that allows me to drill these out. If I'm not doing these production runs on these, I'll go ahead and switch them out for whatever uh, operation I'm doing that includes whatever tool is needed for that job. Today I just wanna go ahead and run through on how we set it up, how we locate it, um, ShopBot does a really good job of including the literature and pictures to walk the user through. Now in addition to the auto tool changer, what's really nice is they have a auto touch off plate here which registers the tool offset, basically the stick out. So let's go ahead and get started. Feel free to ask any questions along the way down below and uh, I'll provide some feedback. Hope you guys enjoy. When you first get your tools set up or if you have a spindle crash and need to reset up your auto tool changing system, you always want to recalibrate your tool rack and make sure the clips are level in all directions. This will ensure the tool holder will be properly aligned when the spindle comes overhead to pick it up or drop it off. In order to calibrate the ATC system, you are going to need a tool holder that is naked. This means it doesn't have a collet or a collet nut on it. Once the bit, collet, and collet nut are removed, we place it upside down in the first position of the ATC tool rack. Then we can take another tool holder and secure a 1 quarter inch rod that ShopBot includes with the CNC into a 1 quarter inch collet and tighten down the collet nut. Next we need to connect the ATC setup wiring unit into the auto tool touch off plate system. We are basically borrowing this input into the control system and the software knows what we are doing when we are doing it. We next test the connection by touching the red and black clips together and making sure the input on the ShopBot software on the computer registers the connection. Once confirmed, we can place the black clip on the spindle and the red clip on the upside down tool holder in the tool rack. Notice the other naked tool holder in the spindle. We need to get the spindle aligned to the first tool and this is an excellent way ShopBot has come up with. We then run the first sequence in the ATC setup on the computer. It tells us exactly what to do and when to do it. These first couple steps are unique and once we get to the point of the drill rod, it gets very repetitive. Once the system touches the two naked tool holders together, it then moves it next to the tool holder which gives you enough room to put the drill rod tool holder into the spindle. 
The computer tells us to lower the spindle so the drill rod can make contact with the upside down tool holder in the tool rack. We lower the spindle and continue. The program will make a series of movements that will locate the exact position of the tool holder by touching the four quadrants on a circle. It also touches the top of the tool holder to measure the height at which the tool holder is positioned. We use the same tool holder for each of the tool holder locations on the tool rack. This is where the process gets very repetitive, but at the same time, the entire process is extremely easy to follow. With only six months under my belt, I'm at the point now where if I need to do this again, I don't have to follow along in the manual anymore. The step-by-step -step instructions on the computer certainly help as well, but there's some confidence buildup that really goes a long way. You may be asking yourself why I've done this a few more times than I may need to. Well, if you crash the machine and forget to home your machine, it forgets where these ATC locations are, or at least it knows where they are, but it doesn't know where it is and has caused a few clips to break. Once you replace the clips, you need to recalibrate them. That also brings up a great point. If you break the clip in the last position or anywhere on the ATC tool rack, you need to recalibrate the entire tool rack as it is a system-wide calibration. It's kind of a bummer, but the entire process taking under 10 minutes or so, in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't a big deal at all. As I have said before, it is a simple and repetitive process once you get past the first couple steps. I continue to move the tool holder down the line until I have completed all the tool holding positions. With the ATC calibrated and ready to use, the tool holders need to be loaded up. This certainly seemed like a big decision at the time, but I quickly realized how easy it was to switch tools and use the auto tool touch off to get the tool stick out offset. In addition to that, I have a few tool holders that are in my CNC computer station that get swapped out from time to time and it's just really not that big of a deal and you really want to switch out your tools for the project that you have going on and the operations that you need to accomplish. ShopBot includes a tool holder vise that allows the user to lock the tool holder in position while loading and unloading the tools. It is conveniently mounted by the ATC tool rack. Whenever putting in a new tool, you want to 100% clean the collet, collet nut, and tool holder for any sawdust, grease, debris, or anything that's going to impede the holding power of that bit. You want to inspect the collet and collet nut as these items can wear out and need to be replaced after so many hours, especially after a significant event like a spindle crash. With all the tool holders loaded up, we can now get them installed on the tool rack. We then run a CN72 command and select each of the tool holders and use the auto tool touch off plate to get the tool stick out offset. This is all automated and automatically updated when you zero the spindle on the spoil board or your material when working on a project. Like I said guys, the ATC here on the ShopBot is not super complicated. ShopBot does a really good job of getting you set up and walking you through step by step on how to get everything done, uh, lined up and ready to go. And then after that, it's uh, the sky's the limit with your creativity. Again, the Auto Tool Changer is just an absolute must if you're gonna be in the production aspect of things and not have to really babysit the machine and change bits every time you need to do a different operation with a different bit. Uh, just efficiencies absolutely go through the roof and the relatively large amount of uh, you know, increase in the cost of the machine is quickly going to pay for that upgrade uh, over the lifetime of the machine as you are uh, building the cabinets or closets or products that you're bringing to market. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to provide some feedback. Follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook for other CNC content, other woodworking content as I go. Uh, we do a lot, a lot of stuff on social media, so go ahead and check that out.
If you haven't already, guys, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss another video. We have a lot of CNC and woodworking content coming up. I have a ton of content on my computer. I just got to go ahead and get edited. Don't forget to smash that like button. I'm Andy Glass of Glass Impressions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.